hello students so in this video i'm going to discuss regarding some important concepts of model 3 okay uh, as people know the model 3 uh, consists of uh, is based on the structural testing approach okay as people know the model 1 is regarding the basics of software testing where model 2 is regarding the functional testing you people know right the functional testing is nothing but the black box testing here there is no need to uh, consider the code okay one day input and outputs are matters here in the functional testing that is why we only uh, you know discuss regarding the boundary value analysis robustness testing and worst worst testing and uh, you know equivalence class testing and decision table approach and all right so this is regarding the functional testing or black box testing Uh, coming to the structural testing approach the main idea of this structural testing is we are going to review the code we are going to take care of the code when we are conducting the test test cases when we are, when we are executing the test cases uh, we actually considers the test uh, code actually we are mainly focusing on the code code part okay so here also the some important concepts are there like uh, uh first uh, uh some uh, concepts like uh, related to uh, different uh, you know uh, way of conducting the uh, you know test cases and all uh, here in structural testing uh, the first uh, and foremost approach is uh, you know of course if people know space run uh, code based testing right so here uh, in which if criteria we are going to conduct the test Okay. so based on this one we are going to categorize this thing into different thing like statement testing branch branch, branch testing and con- condition testing this is one approach so this is this actually this concept is taken from the textbook 3 uh, foundation of software testing by aditya p mathur from the you know uh, section 6.2.1 and 6.2.4 okay Uh, this concept is regarding the you know based on which way we are going to conduct the test if it's based on testment cover as uh, statement coverage it's con- it's called statement uh, testing if it is related to branch coverage it's called uh, branch testing if it is related to loop like for if loop i mean for loop while loop and all uh, some condition uh, if like uh, if condition uh, and the other conditions will uh, comes like right if it is related to condition uh, this is called condition testing okay this is a different way of uh, conducting the test cases right uh, let's let us discuss one by one uh, okay after this one we are going to uh, uh, you know we are going to the detail and anal- we are going to study the detail analysis of path testing okay uh, under path testing there are different terms like uh, dd path will come and uh, test coverage matrix will come uh, under path testing one important concepts uh, people already know right that the basis path testing there is also covers in this testing approach okay so after that one uh, data flow testing will come so path testing and data flow testing are the different uh, two versions of structural testing okay after path testing we're going to Uh, study data flow testing and that data flow testing we have uh, uh, du testing that is nothing but uh, uh, definition use testing and, uh, and slice based testing will come okay so these are all uh, different version of structural testing one is path testing another one is data flow testing okay after that that one uh, another chapter will come that is called test execution how to consider the test execution the criteria and all and this one we are going to study uh, test case specification scaffolding and generic versus specific can scaffolding oracles self checks oracles capture and reply this will completely covers the entire uh, module 3 okay so coming to the first part okay first we divide this thing into three parts uh, one is the first small one uh, that is that is regarding statements testing Branch, branch testing and condition testing it this forms one uh, part okay under the second part 
we are going to study the two versions of testing structural testing first one is path testing second one is data flow testing this is related to uh, part 2 in part 3 we are going to study test execution regarding what exactly the test execution and all uh, like uh, you know uh, uh, from test case specification to test cases what exactly the scaffolding means uh, different version of scaffolding test oracles self checks oracles capture and to play and all okay so let us study uh, uh, each part one by one first we are going to study the first part that is called statement testing, path testing and condition testing ok so before going to know what exactly the branch testing uh, you know uh, statement testing as well as condition testing is we should know the term called adic adequacy criteria what is adequacy means consider uh, a program is there okay the program is p that return to meet some set of uh, functional requirements called r okay r contains some set of functional requirement okay uh, we noted such a p and r as p, p comma r okay let r contain n requirements labeled r1 r2 r3 up to r n then suppose now that a set of uh, t containing k sets has been constructed to test p to determine whether not it meets all requirements in r that means assume we are going to uh, conduct test cases to the program p okay. p is not, nothing but the program r is nothing but the requirements some requirements are there if it is 10 requirements are there r1 r2 r3 up to r10 okay assume t it is a set of test cases if I if I am going to conduct three test cases I am going to label it is like T1, T2, T3 okay if it is uh, if, if I am going to execute five test cases means I am going to label it as a T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 okay this T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 is actually a part of or is actually a uh, elements of set uh, elements of set T okay and that's why the you know capital T is the name of co uh, collection of test cases okay uh, okay that is, that is the thing so the third point we know as is T good enough I mean the set T which contains the test cases if it is five sets of test cases means it T is good enough how do you do that one this question can be stated differently as has P been tested thoroughly I mean the program P actually covers all the things based on the test cases T otherwise it also can be determined as is T adequate is T actually uh, uh, is, is it enough okay, is it covers all the aspect of program P if it is contained the test cases like T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, these all test cases cover all aspects of the program P, then we can easily call it as uh, T is actually adequate. I mean, I mean T is actually enough. It will uh, cover all the test cases. That's why the set T, I mean the capital T, which is a collection of test cases T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 is adequate. Okay, that is the meaning of adequacy. Adequacy is nothing but whether it is actually enough to uh, test whether the program P uh, is uh, I mean I mean to say whether the test case T is enough to uh, say that it will cover all the aspect of program P I mean it, it will cover all the uh, statement it will cover all the loop in that program it will cover all the branch in that program if it is if the test cases covers all these as aspect can easily say that uh, T is adequate or T is enough that is the meaning of adequacy okay that's why this is the meaning of adequacy now we directly go to statement testing what, testing, what exactly that statement testing is okay they will also give an example for that one input uh, you know say x y the standard input devices find and print to the standard output devices the sum of x and y if x is less than y 
find the pin to the standard output device that product x and y if x is greater than is equal to y some requirements will stay these are all actually requirements r1 r2 1 r2 2 okay suppose that the test adequacy criteria c is specified as c in this case a test t from program pr is considered adequate if for each requirement r in r there is at least one test case in T that tests the correctness of P with respect to R. Obviously, T, for example, if you take the value x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3, is inadequate with respect to C for program sum product. Okay, because see here, what, what exactly this program is? Okay, the first requirement says that input two integers x, y from standard input devices where the, the, the next two requirements are find and print to the standard output devices of sum x and y only if it is x is less than y okay and the second requirement 2.2 .2 states that find the printer find and print to the standard output device the product of x and y otherwise if x is less than y just print the sum if x is greater than is equal to y just print uh, print the product okay uh, there are three requirement in that one under under the 2.1 if x is less than y then print the sum if x is greater than is equal to y then print the product this is actually the requirements if you give x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3 obviously we know that x is actually less than 3 I mean x is actually less than y according to this, this one the requirement 2.1 will be there I mean to say it will going to uh, print the sum of 2 and 3 I mean 5 will be actually printed in the standard output but the requirement 2.1 will not be sat satisfied here because why it is not sat satisfied because at the time only we can we either can have x is less than y or we can have x is greater than or is equal to y both the requirement at, at a time is not uh, possible that's why it says this one obviously x is equal to 2 y is equal to 3 is inadequate with respect to c okay per program some product okay the uh, the loan test case t in t case r1 r2.1 but not r2.2 not r okay this is that's why uh, while taking the requirement should be very careful you should uh, say that according to the uh, thing if, if if you easily say that it is adequate then it will actually uh, execute according to the requirement okay okay now directly we go to the statement testing okay what exactly the statement coverage statement testing and all okay is the point here statement and block coverage okay uh, any program written in a procedural language consists of a sequence of statements some of these statements are declarative such as the define like you know declarative statements are there like uh, define int and all okay while others are executable executable statement like assignment statement if uh, condition statement while statements in C and Java are actually executable statement so you can people can recall that a basic block is a sequence of consecutive statement that has exactly one entry point and works one eight exit point right if you want to say that it is a black basic block statement it should exactly has one entry point and one exit point it means I mean to say if a program contains multiple entry point and multiple exit point you can't say that it is actually a basic block either it, it should have actually one entry point and one exit point okay for any procedural languages adequacy with respect to the statement coverage and block coverage criteria are defined next what exactly this one yeah here, here actually it's defined here okay what exactly the statement coverage here statement coverage of t with respect to pr t people know t is nothing but a set of test cases pr is nothing but p is program r is requirements 
is computed as SC divided by SE minus SI. SC divided by SE minus SI. Please remember this thing while you are writing the statement coverage. Where S is C is the number of statement covered. Okay. S is nothing but statement covered. Okay. Where S I is the number of unreachable statement. S I is what? S I is nothing but the number of unreachable statement. Okay. And S E. S E is the total number of statement in the program. That is size of the coverage domain. So, yes, C is nothing but the number of executed. Okay, okay. executed or computed, or you can convert it as a uh, covered number of statement actually covered. Okay, number of statements covered, where I is nothing but uncovered statement or unreachable statement where S E is total number of statements ok for example if 10 statements are there this 10 is nothing but the total number of statement S E out of this 10 statement only 8 statement covered I mean only 8 statement executed then the value of S C is equal to 8 so in out of 10 how much statement actually uncovered two statements are actually uncovered this two is nothing but i okay yes e is total number of statement present in the program yes c is number of statement executed or covered yes i is number of statement uncovered or re unreachable okay this is called statement coverage i mean yes c divided by s e minus s i so t is considered adequate with respect to the statement coverage criterion if the statement coverage of t with respect to pr is 1 i mean the ratio should be 1 i mean it, it i mean to say if you want to say that t is considered adequate it should cover all the executable all the statements in a program if the program contains 10 executable 10 executable statement means the test case should cover all the 10 executable statements there is no the SI, the value of SI should be 0. The value of SI should be same as with the value of SE. E. Okay. Then only you can get the ratio as 1. So, coming to the block coverage. So, statement is nothing, nothing but the statement level. So, block coverage is, is in the, nothing but the black level. So, black coverage of T with respect to PR is computed as BC divided by BE minus PI. Same. Yes, is same as the previous one. Where BC is the number of blocks covered. BI is the number of unreachable blocks. And BE is the total number of blocks in the program. Right? That is the size of block coverage. Same way. If there are uh, three blocks in the, if there are five blocks in the program means the value of BE, BE is 5. Out of this five uh, black coverage if only one uh, only three uh, blocks are actually covered then the value of bc is equal to three obviously the two blocks are actually unreachable or uncovered the value of bi is equal to two okay then the ratio bc divided by be minus bi is equal to wow, how much three divided by five minus how much 3 divided by 5 minus 2. Okay. This is the value of statement minus branch coverage. Okay. So let's see one example of this one. A program is there with respect to statement coverage. Uh, here uh, the coverage domain is the total SC is here. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, B, 9, 10. Okay, these are all actually the executable statements. Uh, begin is there, then in, de in the declaration of index 5, it always start from 2 execution. In Z is there, input 5 and the input x, y, z, and the condition is there, okay, up to 10 statement is there. Okay, 
here uh, the t1 sets of test cases t1 consists of two uh, test case execution for e a different uh, x x y value in the t1 we have uh, uh, the value like s is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to minus 1 in t2 execution i mean the second test case execution the value of x is equal to 1 uh, y is equal to 1 okay uh, the first t1 is consist of negative value and the next t2 is consist of positive values okay here if you give minus 1 and to both x and y just see the code if the value of x is less than is equal to 0 and y is equal to less than is equal to 0 it directly equal to z is equal to x into s right of course if you take the test case t1 of course the value of uh, uh, minus 1 is nothing but it's less than 0 it will directly go to execute the statement 6 okay that's why the value will become minus 1 into minus 1 1 so the value of z is equal to 1 otherwise it will check uh, okay z is equal to 1 then directly go to 7 if it will go to check whether if y is greater than is equal to 0 of course uh, minus 1 means y is actually less than 0 it condition will be false it directly come to which part it directly come to 7 and directly come to uh, 10th part okay that's why if you execute t1 the execution path is 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 8 9 will not execute directly come to 10 because the value of this uh, x1 y1 is equal to minus 1 if you execute uh, the statement t2 in this case check the value of x is equal to 1 1 minus equal to 1 so 2 3 will be executed right 2 3 will be executed 4 will also execute and 5 will also it will going to check the you know it will going to check the value of 5 uh, since uh, the value of x is equal to uh, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to uh, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 it won't execute since uh, the value of uh, you know x is equal to 1 it is actually greater than 0 it directly come to else part i mean to say it directly come to which part uh, 9 part 5 6 7 8 will won't be executed come to else part uh, since the value of x is and y is equal to plus 1 z will be is equal to minus 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 uh, it going to uh, minus 1 only okay x and 10 will be executed okay output z will become so just check here the complete statement coverage is 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 b is nothing but this one okay if x is equal to uh, if y is greater than is equal to 0 the value of uh, uh, z will be z is equal to z plus 1 okay just check here in this case sc in this case just count this one sc value will be is equal to 7 sc is equal to 6 and si is equal to 1 of course uh, 6 divided by 7 minus 1 is equal to 1 because there are 6 executable, st executable statements are there the 6 uh, you know and only one statement is unreachable in this case right just check so just check this this cases here you can see here a uh, coverage domain sc is equal to 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 b 9 10 count that one 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 are there the actual value of sc should be 9 only they have given 7 but it should be 9 the same way is count the test cases of t1 t2 t1 is 2 3 4 5 6 7 10 how many test how many values are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 are, 7 values are there right t2 2 3 4 same thing will be okay you, you can take you know so 2 3 4 just uh, remove that one only take 9 because 9 only distinct from that one right that's why we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 test cases are there okay only one test case execution is missing that is 7b is missing here right that's why sc is 9 and sc is uh, 8 se is 9 sc is 8 si is equal to 1 so uh, just count here right sc is how much sc is sc is uh, the just uh, 8 8 divided by 9 minus 1 right 8 divided by 9 minus I mean oh yes 8 divided by 9 minus 1 of course 8 divided by 8 only 
of course, a derivative of a at means 1 only. Hence, we are conclude that t1 is adequate. Of course, t1 uh, test cases are actually adequate uh, right? regarding the statement coverage branching. That is why so only 7b is unreachable. Okay, all the statements are covered. We can just check by executing the test cases t1, t2. Except what is actually 7b? 7b only if the value is y is greater than is equal to 0. Uh, z is equal to z plus 1 will be uh, occurred here. But in this cases, the value will not execute at all because in both the cases, once if go, go to this statement, it directly go to this one. If uh, the value is y is greater than is equal to 0, it will not execute it at all, right? It will directly come to the else part, that is why it will not execute at all. That is why assign b with is unreachable. Uh, since you can call it as is actually adequate test cases since the ratio is 1. Okay. This, uh, so, in the, in the next video, I am going to explain the blank coverage. Okay. Uh, let us stop in this video. In the next video, I am going to explain uh, the blank coverage. Blank coverage, I already explained the uh, you know, st uh, definition for the one. We will just uh, you know, uh, discuss with an example how the uh, blank coverage will be executed, block, block coverage will be executed. Okay. Uh, next statement uh, in the next video, we will go and discuss the block coverage. Thank you.